During this year of 2014, marking as it does the centenary of the outbreak of the war to end all wars, we are no doubt to be once more treated to a rewriting of history, and at least by some, the glorification of war. Here is a short poem by the Lancashire poet Benjamin Briley regarding an earlier conflict for warmongers and peacemakers alike. Fall of Sebastopol by Benjamin Briley Narrated by Malt Cowell Hush! Methought I heard a sound As twere a booming thunderburst Awake the startled echoes round And cleave the midnight air The first as scarcely died Ere peeling flies A second volley to the skies A third! And now a crash of bells, the newborn tale of triumph tells. Strange whispers pass from door to door, which grow to shouts from street to street, till swelling in one distant roar, where rushing myriads, myriads meet, is climaxed by one thundering voice, Sebastopol hath fallen. Rejoice, ye youths and maidens of the land, Ye grey-haired sires, a noble band, Ye mothers of a race as brave As ever fought on field or wave. Rejoice, this is no time to mourn, Though heroes bleed and cities burn, From crimson rain shall vineyards flow, From smouldering ashes harvests grow. Beside a humble cottage door A woman stood who oft before had lingered there to read of wars As presaged in the book of stars. At times the face of heaven would seem As if illumined by glory's beam, At others drops of lurid light Would leave the sky to blackest night. Then would despair the watcher seize, Who falling on her suppliant knees, Would pray, and would, to a not in vain, her Geordie might come home again. What does it mean? The woman cries, As past her door a neighbour flies. What does it mean? What does it mean? The war is o'er. God bless the Queen. The war is o'er and England won. Then I shall see again my son. Yes, in thy visions, woman grey, But not in dance or revel gay. Loot where the battle smoke divides, Where amongst the slain the victor rides. There, see, the rising cloud reveals A form that from a saddle reels, A wound made by a sabre stroke, Like winter sun through fog and smoke, Or iron bar in heated forge, Marks for the grave thy darling George. What will they say in England now? exclaims the youth with bleeding brow. Alas, I shall not hear what's said, for now I'm quartered with the dead. Then he takes from his breast a charm, one not to shield from battle's harm, but one to kiss at evening prayer. It is a lock of silver hair. What will they say in mine own land? exclaims a youth of another band. Victorious you and conquered we, though why we fought's unknown to me. That fatal cup was from my sword, and your own steel my blood hath gored. Then take see from his breast a charm, one not to shield from battle's arm, but one to kiss at evening prayer. It is a lock of golden hair. Two hands are clasped in death's embrace, Two foes are prostrate face to face. You leave a mother, said the one, His power of utterance nearly gone. I leave a wife and children dear, And t'was not glory led me here. They said t'was fealty to the Tsar That forced his subjects into war. But why it was that I slew you, Or why it was that me you slew, is not for us but kings to say, On greater field and greater day.
Locked in each other's arms the twain Were told at roll call with the slain. As foes they fought, as friends they bled, The martyred triumph of the dead. What holier voice could sound afar, A protest against the sin of war?